Beep, beep. Good morning. Hello. How are you? <clears throat> Fred Sargent. Fred! We love Fred. For those of you that don't know who Fred Sargent is, there's a tweet in the Dubris. Right? I'm going to go through this tweet because it's bloody extraordinary. Right? And then, and when somebody is bloody extraordinary, I like to pay attention to them. And Fred Sargent is an extraordinary man. He was there at Stonewall. He has endured the most appalling abuse from the LGBTQ hands, knees and bums, the daisy nutters. Um, and yet here he is fighting fit at an age when most of us can get off our chairs. So, first of all, hello Fred, and thank you so much for what is a very important thread, Fred. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be serious now. Hands, knees and bums, daisy. Right, so I'm going to read it. And I'm hoping that you're going to listen to the end. Most people don't. They go, oh, I've had enough of this bloviating wind bag. I'll turn off now. But this one's worth hearing to the end. Okay? The full story. So let's go. And Fred begins with a quote from Yogi Berra. And the quote is, it's like deja vu all over again. Which is, I think, a brilliant quote. Fred begins. Every year at this time, in what I think of as the prelude to Pride Month, the LGBTQI2SYAP plus press comes out of the gate with Magnus Hirschfeld, pioneer drivel. The year, this year is the 19th anniversary of the, of the sacking, excuse my, German, excuse my German pronunciation for my German watchers, of the sacking of Hirschfeld's Institute for Sexual Wissenschaft, or Institute for Sexual Research, ISR. This was in Berlin by National Socialist students of the Hochschule für Leibesunbegun, Berlin School of Physical Education, on May the 6th, 1933, culminating in the burning of tens of thousands of the Institute's books. That was the National Socialists that did that. The ISR had been an outgrowth of Wissenschaftlich Humanitaris Committee, why I put on a German accent, I don't know, but it helps. Scientific Humanitarian Committee, the SHC, formed in 1897. Hirschfeld, a Jewish homosexual, had seen the handwriting on the wall months earlier and had fled Germany, leaving his colleagues to hold the bag. There are pictures here that Fred is using to illustrate the importance of his historical narrative. Fred continues. Hirschfeld was big on slogans and mottos. One being... Through science to justice. There we go. Right? Odd, since scientifically, Hirschfeld believed that gays and lesbians constituted a third sex, a notion even then at odds with the known science, as it is today. While this is the agreed-upon history of the period, much is forgotten about how it got there. Our present-day disagreement about what constitutes our community would have sounded familiar to the average gay Berliner. Predating the SCH, which one was that? Which was the Scientific Humanitarian Committee. <clears throat> was the gay periodical Der, Der Angine, published by bisexual anarchist, all the rage in those days, by the way, Adolf Brand. While Brand and Hirschfeld agreed that the imperial anti-gay law, which was called 175, Statute 175, had to go. They agreed on little else. By 1903, the disagreement had become so intense that Brand joined others in forming an LGB group called Gemeinschaft der Eingenen, or Community of Free Spirits, the CFS, with significant financial support from gay men of letters, sexologists, sociologists, economists, volcanologists, physicists, Benedict Friedlander, another forgotten hero, Friedlander withdrew his support for SHC that same year, and the first LGBTQ plus schism began. Both groups successfully attracted support and members, but this will sound familiar, bracket says Fred, it was Hirschfield that got the most print starting in the 1990s. Today, few remember our noted LGB predecessors. Today, it's all Hirschfield, 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 and trans, trans, trans. Eight months after Hirschfeld Institute lay in ruins, Brand got the something like a last word. 
in the letter of November 1993. In that letter, we learn that Hirschfield Institute was not the first gay organisation targeted by the Nazis. It was Brand de Angine on May 3rd, 1933. Brand doesn't mince words in his condemnation of Hirschfield's pseudoscience of third sex and transgenderism. Brand called the sacking of the Institute confiscations of writings and books that were really just rubbish and dirt or whose unscrupulous sensationism had also given the movement the worst reputation. Let me close, says Fred, with the worst about Hirschfield last. Hirschfield was a committed eugenicist. He supported breeding out those he considered the lesser elements of society, those of ill health and feeble-minded, much like Hitler's first victims. He didn't spare gays from the eugenics. He experimented on gays, on gays by castrating gay men, as he thought, to improve them, to improve the breed. Unlike Hirschfeld, Brand did not run away. He remained in Germany at risk of death for his known homosexuality and died in an Allied bombing in 1945. There's much more personal sleaze about Hirschfeld, but to me the crowning irony is that his eugenicism was too much, even for the master eugenicists, the Nazis. Today, his successors are reconstituting his excesses by mutilating LGB youth in another eugenics experiment to improve the human breed with a new eugenic conversion therapy process. That process is transgenderism. And Fred ends by saying, I know what day I'll be observing next year. And he says that day will be May the 3rd in order to observe the truth about the origins of transgenderism and gender identity ideology. Um, my thanks to Fred as a noted elder of the community in America. Fred has my respect and certainly my love and wishes for all the best for him, as I know that he has not been too well lately. He's been beaten up, he's been attacked, he's been vilified online by a group of purple-held purple ninnies, all of whom are too young to even know anything about any of this. All of them too young. There are so many strands to this, there are so many roots that got us here to this tree of transgenderism, that we need to understand each of those roots and destroy them. The concept that there was anything, anything in the Holocaust that had to do with trans people is a lie. In fact, Germans cross-dressed got a pass, a special pass. A special pass that they could show that they were just a cross-dresser and they weren't gay. The homophobia of the gender identity ideology movement was there at the very beginning. It's still there now. Keep telling those stories, folks, because it matters. Have a great day.